For the past year, I have been obsessed with Mushoku Tensei, Jobless Reincarnation, an adventure isekai with immersive world building and intricate character relationships that I have found captivating since day one in the exact same manner as when Eris was captivated by magic in episode 5 of its anime adaptation. Now at the same time, I have also been obsessed with Elden Ring for the past 3 weeks or so as one of my favorite games. Now combining these two passions, I've decided to make a video guide on how anyone can start off their character, similar to Rudius Greyrat from Mushoku Tensei, and enjoy Elden Ring as a quick-witted, unstoppable mage that has a flashy playstyle and was clearing through early game content with relative ease. Instead of being a build, the intent of this guide is to provide players with useful spells, gear, and equipment so that they can start their journey with a diverse arsenal that can be adaptable in the same manner that Rudius was during his time as an adventurer. In this video you'll learn how to gain access to new spells, get additional memory slots, and learn the location of some fantastic items to get you started on an epic adventure in the lands between. We're going to jump right into character creation for Rudy's Grey Rat. Again, our class is going to be Astrologer, because we're going to be a mage. And here's a side-by-side -side comparison between um, young adult Rudius, about 15 years old, and the character I've made for him, an Elden Ring. Not perfect, but I think it's a decent match. And we're going to choose our Keepsake as the um, Golden Seed, just so that we have extra flash charges at the start of the game. I think that's a good way to start. Now we'll go over the starting route for this character. So the first thing we're going to do is visit the Sites of Grace and unlock the Maiden as well as Torrent. Then we're going to find uh, Selen, who is a sorcery vendor, as well as the Royal House Scroll so that you can obtain some carrying sorceries to start with. Then we're going to go to the Dragon Ruins and use the Teleporter Chest to go to Selia Crystal Mines so that we can get to Kaelid. Then we're going to go to find the uh, Meteorite Staff as well as the Rock Sling Spell, which is in the nearby ruins. And then we're going to travel all the way to Fort Farrath to obtain the Radagon Source Seal, which is a very potent early game talisman. And travel to Lenny's Rise to get a free memory stone from the puzzle. Optionally, we're going to kill Knight's Calvary to get the Bloodhound Step, which is a very, very, very good Ash of War. Now, I don't know if it's a bug or an exploit or if it's intentional on the method that I used to defeat it early. Um, so a little bit of a spoiler alert for that if you are or are not interested. But once we have done all these steps, we're going to be good to go on our character. You're going to be able to clear all of the content in Limgrave with, you know, I would say is with relative ease. If it's your first time playing Elden Ring, it's probably not going to be super easy to do. But you're going to have the tools so that you can do it regardless of how much you're upgrading your stuff, how much you're progressing on your character and getting levels. This setup will be solid for mages. Okay, so in the background, we've already been running through the Sites of Grace. Now we're at Gatefront, and we just got the Maiden, unlocked the ability to level up, as well as got Torrent, which is going to be our means of traveling. Now I'm sure most people are already familiar with this, but also make sure to go to the Gatefront Ruins and pick up the Map Shard, which is located right over here. Now we can make our way to the... Um, the waypoint ruins. So we're going to pick up this site of grace real fast. Then I'm going to show on the map. It's going to be located over here in the southeast. We want to head over here to the waypoint ruins to find Selen. Now there is a man in a bush over here. I'm not sure if this is associated with some sort of quest line. I'm sure it is, um, but I haven't looked too much into it because I didn't run into this in my first playthrough. But that being said, we're going to get carry on with the guide. I think we can do everything in, you know, uh, under 30 minutes. Um, if you're following along, it might take you probably somewhere around like 45 minutes to an hour. But again, all of this should be done pretty early um, with relative ease. So... I'm pretty excited to share this with you folks. Now we got the Ash of War determination from that uh, silver beetle over there, but we made our way to the waypoint ruins now. So we're going to head on inside and you're going to find a set of staircases over here, which leads into a fog wall. So there is a boss fight. We're going to be taking on Pumpkinhead, who's a very easy starter boss. 
Now his head takes reduced damage, so what you want to do is unlock your camera and target only his body. You're going to unlock every time you cast it so that it only hits low. And when you need to dodge, you can lock on. Now when he does a downward slam, you can immediately parry his fist attack that follows up to get some free damage. You can also repost. Got a little bit ca uh, sloppy over there. But we're just going to carry on, dodging his attacks, unlocking to cast our Glintstone Arc at his legs. And he will be dead. So this is pretty much with the base gear. Um, yeah, we actually haven't touched anything on this character yet, so you can kill him very easy. You don't need to upgrade anything. You don't need levels. It's just a matter of a little bit of strategy. And here's Selen. So tell her that you want to learn sorcery, and then she's going to ask you a second question. Just say yes. Still wish to learn from her? Yes, of course. And so now you become her apprentice. She actually does have a quest line that we can do later. But um, she's going to be our earliest available sorcery vendor. So you can buy a few spells from her. Um, Scholar's Armament is really good if you're going to be a spellblade or if you want to use um, weapons alongside spells. But for the purposes of being a pure mage, um, we just want to have access to her as a spell vendor so that we can give her scrolls. So don't forget to rest at the Grace here so that you can travel back to Selen whenever you want. And then we're going to head over to our next destination, which is just south from here, to get the Royal House Scroll. So I'm going to throw that on the map right now. So it's located in the... kind of towards the bridge where the Weeping Peninsula is. It's hard to explain, but you'll see in a moment. So further over there south, you can see two buildings. Um, two of these like big square ruins and on top of one of them is going to be the scroll that we want So right there you can see the waypoint Don't really mind these guys over here. You can just ignore them. There is a chest over here that I wanted to um, loot. I wasn't sure what loot's inside But we're getting beat up on so we're just gonna Head to the scroll first. So climb up these little mountains. And jump onto the top of this building. And right there is a the scroll. So we're going to kill this guy. And there's Royal House Scroll. So I'll show this later on, but when you take this back to Selen and give it to her, um, it does unlock two new spells for you, the Glint Blade Phalanx, as well as the Carrion Slicer. Um, Glint Blade Phalanx is not the greatest spell for PvE content. It's good for duels. It's good for um, when you're getting invaded on by players or NPCs. But the Carrion Slicer is actually a really strong um, melee DPS spell that I love to use as a mage. So we do get the great EP whatever the heck that weapon is it's a it's a thrusting sword a heavy thrusting sword not going to be needed for this build um, but i just wanted to see what was inside that chest because i didn't check it before uh, there's also another little scarab here that you can kill and this one i believe has the unsheath yep unsheath ash four but we're gonna have it over, over to these ruins which are the dragon ruins dragon burnt ruins and over here, you're going to find a staircase again. Pretty much all of these ruins that you run into on the maps are going to have at least one set of stairs that leads down to a chest or a boss or something. So there's a lot of rats in here. we got to go clear them out. Glintstone Arc is very good against weak creatures like this that are grouped up. Okay, so once you 
you take care of that, you can head on to the door. We're gonna open it up. And then there's a chest. However, this chest is not a regular treasure chest. It's actually a teleporter chest. So just stand still once you open it and it'll ensnare you in the teleporter trap, which will take you to the Celia Crystal Mines in Kaelid. So this is actually a means of fast travel um, for players early game if you want to get outside of Limbrave. Now, of course, you can travel manually on foot or by horse to Kaelid just by crossing over on the east, um, but this is much, much, much faster. So don't be too afraid. We're just going to run over here and get immediately out of the mine to the fast travel point of Excited Grace at the entrance. So here's the Excited Grace. Now what we're going to want to do is head outside of the Crystal Tunnel and head over to the Street of Sage Ruins, which are located in the west. So we're basically going to be following the, um, the coastline along the swamp. So we're going to be heading west uh, in the Swamp of Ionia, towards these ruins. Now, once you make it to the ruins, you're going to again want to find a set of stairs, which is located over here. And watch out for the guys over here. They're going to stab you. We want to get inside here for the chest, which has the Rock Sling spell. So you need 18 intelligence to cast this spell. It's a very powerful um, long range spell that's good for uh, dealing a lot of damage, but because it has a slow cast time, you can really only use it against certain um, situations and certain bosses. I'm going to show later on fighting Margit. You definitely don't want to use the Rock Sling spell in the middle of combat with Margit, unless he gives you like a big opening. Um, but here, we also got the Meteorite Staff, so that's going to synergize with our Rock Sling, as well as just be a very powerful early game staff. It has a S intelligence scaling. It needs 18 intelligence to, to be wielded. So we are going to have to put two levels into intelligence. But this is a fantastic staff and spell to start your run off with. So the next site you rest at over here, uh, it is going to summon the maiden, and she's going to take you to the round table. But we're gonna we're gonna skip that because we don't need anything from the round table right now. And the next step is going to be to head north, then east um, towards Fort Farith. So we're gonna have to kind of loop around. It's a little bit of a long path, um, but you can just follow along. This um, silver scarab for the life steal fist, Ash War. Again, nice to have, but not needed for the build. I pick up this set of grace. Then you want to make your way along this wall towards what's going to be a pretty big, um, not, not really a cannon, more like a ravine over here. You want to head along here and pick up the souls from the graves over here. These are actually really good runes that you can get. We jump across. And now we're in the Grail's Dragon Barrel. So 
want to pick up the next phrase. And if you head over here, you can actually pick up the map shard so that you can see the rest of Dragon Barrow. Fortunately, I think we're in combat, so I actually can't open the map right now. Do be careful, there's a lot of dragons that kind of patrol the area around here. But now you can see we have the map unlocked for this portion. So Fort Parath is going to be over there. Uh, bridge over here, and you can see the fort. So here we are. There's a big white dragon over here. If you have a bleed weapon, you actually can kill it from behind by just kind of smacking its leg, um, and that gives 75,000 souls. But I, I'm not sure if that affects anything quest line wise or story wise, um, so I don't recommend it. But we're gonna go into Fort Farrath. And don't worry about being underleveled here. You don't have to fight anything. We're just going to run. So head immediately towards the ladder over here. Head up the ladder. Everything in Kaelid is going to be really, really strong compared to your initial starting level and gear. So just want to avoid things as much as possible. You can open up the chest here for the Dectus Medallion, which is uh, really useful for a quest later on. And then you want to head to the last hole over here, drop down. Um, pick up this rune because it's actually a golden rune 12, so that gives 7,500 7, souls, or 7,500 runes rather. Uh, and I died here. Uh, don't. Don't worry about it if you die, it's not a big deal, because we're going to get a lot of souls anyway, and we're just here for the talisman. So just head back up. You can actually see through the little crevices of the wood there, there is a legendary talisman on the other side, so that's what we're going to get. Let's go up the ladder. <laughs> Again, jump down. So what you're going to want to do is immediately on your right, you can jump over to this area. Oh, I wanted to get my soul, so I had to, I, I had to go back. But um, watch out for the big rat here. Just keep rolling. Drop down another hole. And boom. Now you have the Radagon Source Seal. So at this point, it's kind of hard to get back up, but if you can get back to the ladder, that's great. If you can't, then you can just die to the rat. So I'm just going to get killed here. Even the little baby rat won't shot me. Okay, and now we are back at the site of grace. And we can check out our new stuff. So again, you can pop this golden rune 12 for 7,500 runes, which you can use to level up a few times. So we're actually going to put um, two points into intelligence immediately. That way we can use the new spell and new staff that we got. So the meteorite staff is going to boost our gravity sorcery, which is the rock slang spell. It also has S intelligence scaling, which is fantastic for a starting weapon. Um, so that's going to be great. The Radagon Sorcio, which is the talisman we just got, gives plus 5 to 4 stats. We do take more damage because it reduces damage reduction. But we're getting a huge bonus to Vigor, Endurance, and Strength of Dex. Strength doesn't matter. Dex is actually pretty helpful for casting speed. So that's great. 
So we're also going to be showing the rock sling ability, which launches three boulders towards a location and does pretty good damage, but it has a long cast time. Uh, next up, we're going to head to Lenny's Rise to get a memory stone so that we can have more spells available at once in combat. So head northeast and just follow along again. We're going to head up. And over here, there's a drop, but you can find a little um, sp spirit sprint thing. You can go down that way, or you can head over here and jump down here. Spirit Spring, that's what they were called. So you can take that Spirit Spring and safely land, and then we can head up. Don't mind the uh, boss over here. The Meteorite Staff actually does enhance um, your Meteorite spells, so the Rock Sling um, is actually going to get additional damage because we're using the Meteorite Staff. Now, passing along these graves, again, you want to pick up the runes, spree, runes. Go to room 8 and 6, pretty good. And this is Lenny's Rise, so we're going to head on over here. And... You actually can't climb it from there, so what we have to do to get inside the building... We're going to rest at the grace first. But when you pull up to Lenny's Rise, you're going to see that it's locked. There's a seal on the gate. You can't get inside. But, if we look around... Actually, we're going we're gonna to spend a few more of our runes, just level up. Vigor and Intelligence. You can also put points in mind too. So we're going to take the spirit spring here, jump up onto the roof of the building. And then you can see over here there's actually a little balcony that we can slide into. And we're inside the building now. So whenever you see similar rises like this, uh, most of them that are locked are gonna actually have memory stones inside. So it's worth figuring out the puzzle or the navigation around it to get inside and get those sweet memory stones for more memory slots. So we open up the chest and boom, memory stone. We're going to head back to the Grace. Now, the next step's optional. You don't have to do it, but I think getting the Bloodhound step is going to be amazing for this build or for your setup. So what you're going to want to do to get it is fight the Knight's Calvary over here. And the way that I found to beat him um, without any gear at the start of the game is to lure him up the top of the cliff. So make sure he's following you, and then start heading up to this uh, slope. You're going to see there's a bunch of like pots that have poison in them. And so that's going to proc poison on him. But once we head all the way to the top of this hill here and turn around, I'm not sure why, but the Knight's Calvary will de-aggro, and then he'll die. Boom. So I don't know if that's specifically because he's poisoned and he lost aggro and then all of the poison ticks just like instant kill him or something, or if it's a bug, or if it was intentional, I, I have no idea. Um, but yeah, that's how you get the Bloodhound step without literally any effort. It's free. So pretty nice to have. You also get 42,000 souls, which is nutty, so you can use that to just buy all the spells you want. So we're back at Selen. We gave her the scroll. And we're going to buy Carrion Slicer. That's my favorite one to use early game. Um, Glintbade Valanx is pretty good too, but we don't really need it that much. <clears throat> so you can do whatever you want with the souls. You So at least save 3,000 of those to go to the round table and then buy a memory stone from the 
twin uh two twin headed husk the vendor there so we can show a little bit of the spells that's carrying slicer basically lets you use your staff like a sword it actually does quite a bit of damage though so don't underestimate this spell currently using it with a dagger, so I have quick step, but uh, once we swap out with Bloodhound step, I'm going to have the blink. So for those of you who don't know, Bloodhound step is a very powerful Ash of War because it allows you to blink in a direction, get huge iframes, and travel a pretty far distance. So it's a good mobility spell, both for offense and for defense. So we're going to go put that on the longsword. You can go to the blacksmith in the round table. We're going to keep it standard for the base damage. And now I can show off a little bit of the Bloodhound step. So that's going to be your weapon skill. So we can just quickly avoid attacks, get onto the flank, and use our carrying slicer. Or you could use it to back off and engage with longer range spells as well. So if you do run out of FP, you can still use the Bloodhound step. It's going to be a dash or like a quick step rather than the normal blink. It's still useful, but I recommend you just stay topped off on FP so you can always use the Bloodhound step. Now we're going to go over the Margit boss fight with this build. I'm using the exact same setup that I've shown you so far. We opened with Rock Sling and then we're going to be using Carry On Slicer and Glintstone Pebble for our DPS. We can actually be pretty aggro um, with our usage of both spells because of Bloodhound Step. So I got a refill on FP here. Luckily we dodged that thrust. We avoided the thrust. We're going to get up close with Carry On Slicer. Oh. You have to be careful with the Bloodhound Step. Sometimes you'll circle around an opponent when you meet to like, back off. So Make sure you have good control of your directional inputs. Watch out for these daggers. And we already have them down to about 30% health. So we're just going to keep following through with Pebble. And when he gets in close, we can switch a slicer. So careful on the follow-up with this one. You want to stick to range. Don't, don't try to melee him out of that attack. But he's pretty low already, so we're just going to go in for the kill. And that's it. This without any upgrades on our weapons. So that was pretty easy, I would say. And you can pretty much kill all the early game bosses in Limgrave with this setup. Now, I think if you want to roleplay more as Rudis' character, um, you can use a little bit more ranged spells. I like mixing in the melee with the carry and slicer. I think it's a lot of fun, actually, with the Bloodhound step. And um, over here, we're going to be showing the fight against Agil, the dragon. So this one's going to be a lot more range-based. We're going to just spam Rock Sling for a lot of the fight because we have the distance and the time to do so. Now make sure you're on your horse so that when he does a fire breath attack you don't get caught entirely by it. I, I did get caught here so <laughs> that was a little bit silly of me. Um, but with the horse you actually can outrun the flames if you're on the right angle of it. Now we're going to use a little bit of pebble which is actually doing pretty good damage to him. Pebble is definitely the most optimal use of your FP but I like having the variety of spells to make combat a lot more fun for a mage. So we're gonna switch back to the Rock Sling. Smack him in the head with it. And then when you see this attack, make sure to get off your horse so that you can roll through it. Um, I don't know if you can avoid it on your horse. Maybe you can, but in my experience, it's easier to just be on foot when he does that. And then when he travels far away, you wanna get back onto your horse. So it's very helpful to have your horse um, hotkeyed to the pouch. That way you can use it in combat very easily. 
We're gonna use a little bit more of our carrion slicer up close. Slash at his legs. Refill on FP. And then back to the rock sling. So because of the rock sling's projectiles being pretty big, it's hard to hit on small enemies, but against a dragon, it's actually super easy to just hit all three projectiles and deal a good amount of damage. And we're just going to finish it off again with uh, another two rock slings. So that's going to be it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. You're going to have all the necessary spells and gear you need to clear Limgrave. And I might make another video later on. But like, comment, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one.